Hello, my name is David Ramirez, and today I will be giving a tutorial for Dr. San Felice's Hybrid System Simulation Toolbox by Modeling a Pendulum. The tutorial will consist of two models. First, a simple pendulum, and secondly, a pendulum bouncing off of a wall. By the end of this tutorial, you should understand the important physical phenomena involved in creating such models, understand how to code the M files within the simulation, and be ready to create your own simulations. In creation of both models, we will take on the same four steps. Understanding the physics involved, establishing the flow set and map and the jump set and map of such a system, implementing these ideas into written code, and lastly, running the system. The motion of a pendulum bob suspended from a frictionless pivot by a weightless rod of length L is dictated by the differential equation d squared theta over dt squared equal to g over L sine theta. This is the most important equation for the simulation and it will be solved over a given time span by MATLAB's ODE45. For the purposes of our simulation, we will define x1 as theta the angle that the pendulum makes with the vertical axis, x2 will be the time derivative of x1, or theta dot, and as stated previously, the second time derivative of theta, represented by x2 dot, is equal to d squared theta over dt squared equal to g over l sine theta. The general model will consist of a flow map, flow set, jump map, and jump set. We start first with the flow map F, which defines a differential equation that governs the continuous change of the state variables. The flow map is represented as a column vector of two elements. The first element is x2, corresponding to theta dot, and the second element is g over L sine theta, corresponding to theta double dot. The flow set C dictates when the model will be flowing. Because our initial example does not involve any wall, it will be flowing throughout the time span, making the rest of the simulation simple. C is simply defined as a vector space of two dimensions. The jump map G dictates how the state jumps. Because the system does not jump, the contents of G is insignificant. The jump set D dictates when the state jumps. Again, because the system does not jump, nothing will be placed in D. Now we're ready to start our simulation. Open MATLAB and in the command window type Simulink. The Simulink library browser appears. To start a new model, click the new model icon on the top left hand side of the screen. Next, navigate in the library's column to the Hybrid Equations Toolbox. Expand the toolbox and open Hybrid Equations Optimize. Now, drag the first box into your model. Double click the box to see the MATLAB functions corresponding to the Flow Map, Flow Set, Jump Map, and Jump Set. We'll begin coding in the flow map, F. Double click the MATLAB function. Delete the current contents of the function. We'll start by defining the state. The state allows us to draw upon the values of theta and theta dot at any given time t. To define the state, type x1 is equal to x parentheses 1 and x2 is equal to x parentheses 2. Second, we provide the differential equations. The two constants are length, which we'll define as 1, and gamma, which we'll define as negative 9.81. Lastly, we provide x dot. The column vector x dot contains the values of theta dot and theta double dot. 
we type in x of 2 and gamma over length times the sine of theta, or x1. Now, we'll move on to the flow set. Exit out of the flow map and double click the flow set. See, because this initial model never jumps, we simply type v equals 1. Next, we'll move on to the jump map, G. Although the model will never access the jump map in this initial example, we type x plus equal to 0, 0. And finally, the jump set, D. must always return a value of zero because again the model will not jump. Before we continue we should save the model. Create a new folder called high EQ pendulum and save our model as Pendulum. Before the simulation can be run, it must be initialized. Initialization creates a time and jump span of the model, establishes the initial conditions, and defines the maximum step, tolerances, and priorities. After the simulation is run, the results can be graphed with a post-processing function. For simplicity, we're going to use an initialization and a post-processing function that you've already downloaded when you downloaded the Hybrid Equation Systems Toolbox. Go to MATLAB and expand Hybrid Equations Toolbox V2. Expand the Examples folder and expand example 1.2a, bouncing ball with simulating external files. Copy the post processing and initialization folder. And put them into the folder we made previously. Now you can rename them. post-processing pendulum and initialization pendulum open initialization pendulum we'll need to make one edit to it x not has the initial value of theta and theta dot. Change the initial value for theta to pi over 4, corresponding to an initial value of 45 degrees with the vertical. This is the only change we'll have to make to initialization pendulum, and post-processing is already ready. Now, return to the simulation The last step before running our simulation will be to return to example 1.2a open the simulation and copy the state, flow, and jump boxes and their corresponding arrows Now return to our simulation, 
and paste these as shown. We're now ready to run the simulation. Double click the box to initialize. Find our initialization folder. Run the simulation. Now double click to plot the solutions. Again, locate the post processing pendulum, open it, and the results are shown. Now let's get more complicated. The underlying physics of this system is mostly the same. However, now there is a wall at theta equals zero. When the pendulum comes in contact with the wall, it bounces off, assuming 80% of its velocity in the opposite direction. The flow map will be the same, however, the model will only be flowing as long as theta is greater than zero as reflected in the change in the flow set. Upon collision with the wall, the model will now jump to 80% of its original speed in the opposite direction. This jump will occur as dictated by the jump set when x1 or theta is less than or equal to zero and x2, or theta dot, is less than or equal to zero. The flow map will remain the same, so we'll start coding our new model with the flow set. Now we must use an if-else statement to have the function return 1 only if theta is greater than zero. We start by redefining the state. and then enter our if-else statement. If x1 or theta is greater than or equal to 0, the function will return 1. Else, the function will return 0. End. Now go to the jump map, G. The jump map, the jump map will correct the ball's velocity after it is collided with the wall. Set x1 equal to 0 0.001 and x2 to negative 0.8 times x2 corresponding to the ball's velocity in the opposite direction. However, for the function to draw upon the value of x2, we need to define the state. x2 equal to x2. Finally, the jump set d will return 1 if theta is less than zero and theta dot is also less than zero. Again, to find the state, and start the loop. If x1 is less than or equal to zero and 
x2 is less than or equal to 0, v equals 1. Else, v equals 0. Now we're ready to run the final simulation. It's already initialized, so run it. Now double click to plot the solutions. Now you can see that with each jump, x1 and x2 begin to decay until they will eventually reach zero. This concludes the pendulum tutorial. Thank you for watching.